So you've established whether the results and the study are valid. You've established what the results actually are. So these two final questions will help you decide whether the findings are relevant to you and whether you're going to make any changes based on the findings of this, this specific paper. So question nine says, can the results be applied in your context or to your local population? So you need to think of the participants in the trial, are they similar to the type of patients you see? Is the healthcare system in which the um, study is being conducted similar? Are the disease levels similar? Are the, um, the, the individual characteristics of the patients or the participants similar? And do you know enough about the setting to know whether if you were to change and adopt, say, a new intervention for your patients, whether the results that you would see in your patients would be similar to the results seen in the patients or participants reported in the trial. So you need to have a look um, at the method, have a look at the results where they describe the characteristics of the participants, but also think about the setting and the wider healthcare context in which the study was carried out and compare that to the setting in which um, you would be applying the results. Question 10 is where you consider whether the outcomes that were investigated in the paper actually covered all the clinically important outcomes you are interested in. So it may be that you're left reading it thinking that there was other import, important information you would have liked to have seen. So this may be about the side effect of drugs. This may be about adverse reactions that, that patients in the trial have described because it may be that those affect your decision. Because if the primary outcome and secondary outcomes of the study are described and show, say, a treatment to be effective, but say the treatment is not acceptable to participants or to patients, or the researchers may not have considered the cost of the interventions, those kinds of things, then it may be that you've read the paper, but you're less left thinking that you would not implement the findings of that paper because there's other important information you would like to see before you decide to make a change. So the final question is question 11. And this is where you, in your own mind, weigh up the benefits um, of the intervention and you weigh that up against the um, potential risks or harms of that intervention. And you also weigh that up about the costs. Because it may be that the trial, the paper itself that you're reading, has not um, enabled you to weigh up the benefits and the harms. And you need to be able to think about for your own patients, your own participants, your own population, do you think in your context that the benefits, any benefits that are described are worth the harms and worth the, the financial cost to the individual or to society? And it's also um, worth bearing in mind when you get to this stage that we rarely base decisions, clinical or public health decisions, just on one randomised control trial. So at this stage, um, you should think about the trial, the paper that you have chosen, but also think about that in the context of other trials or other, say, systematic reviews that are combining the results of more than one trial or more than one study. So to um, finish off the session, 
with a summary. In summary, critical appraisal is an important step in conducting evidence-based healthcare or public health. And dentists, dental care professionals, and um, researchers more generally throughout their careers will be required to carry out both formal and informal appraisal of scientific literature. If you would like further information about reading papers, there's a very nice series of um, articles by um, Tricia Greenalsh, which is published by the BMJ, and you can find that by searching uh, Google search for that those papers and also I would strongly recommend you have a look at some of the checklists on the CASP website but also some of the specific checklists just to familiarise yourselves with the type of questions that those checklists contain. Thank you for listening.